Hi there. This is going to be the final part three on the series of how to print your prints with crop marks anywhere you like them outside of the print. If you want some type of border and be able to cut your prints with that border. In the previous video, we had saved a layout that looks like this. And in that video, we showed how to manually add a photo mat, which is basically what this big white template is. But I'm going to show you another method in this video on how to do that. I'm going to show you how to edit this. First, before we get started, there is a new version that just came out today on February 27th. So get this 104 version because I corrected a bug that will affect your ability to follow along here if you're using prior to this version. So make sure you're using 2021.104 and we can go on from here. Now, again, this is picking up from the second video where we created this white template that's 400 by 500 with a 400, um, 420 by 297 print inside of that. But as I said, we manually created a photo mat here in the, in the end of that second video. But it is a photo mat. So you can click on this white photo mat here and go to photo mats and choose edit selected photo mat. And now you can see the borders here for that photo mat. And it's basically 40 on the top and bottom and 51 and a half on the sides, which is what gives us this size of the print in the middle. And I didn't show this method of doing it the first time around because we had specific sizes we were working with. And this requires a little bit of math to figure out what your borders are here. But once you have it set up, if you decide that you want a little bit more space on the bottom, as you can see, there's equal spacing here beforehand. Well, I could change this top one to 30 and the bottom one to 50 so that it still adds to 80. And now I have less space on the top and more on the bottom. And I can click OK. And you can see here that there's less space up here and there's more space on the bottom. You give you some room for some text or something like that. So you can actually edit this as a photo mat once you've placed it there. And you can do things like that. Now, I will mention that when you look in here, you're always going to see a very slight difference, 0.02 millimeters or something like that. Here we have 30.01, and that is simply reading the position on the printer's canvas. Because remember, the printer driver is operating, as you can see here, 600 by 600 PPI. And if you enter something like 51 and a half millimeters, that may be halfway between one dot and the next available dot. So it's placing it as close as it can. Uh, so that's why you see slight differences here. That won't matter at all when you print because that will not be detectable. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, and again, if you grab this outer photo mat or large white template, you can move it around wherever you want. That's just how photo mats work. Now, let me get this out of here. I'll go back to IntelliCenter and I'll show you the way that we could have done it if we wanted to use the photo mat feature rather than manually adding that white template. All we have to do is select, it's already selected, but select the template thumbnail and then enter your size of your print, which is 297 by 420. So now we have the correct size print here and we want to add a photo mat to give us a mat that goes out to 400 by 500. So to do that, we select this template that we added here that's going to end up in our layout and then we just go to photo mats we do add photo mat and we've already done the math and we know it's going to be 40 on the top 40 on the bottom 51 and a half on both sides and this gets us to the 400 by 500 size um, we make sure that this grow mat around the photo is selected so that it doesn't try to shrink the photo. That will put the mat outside of the print area. So check this bottom radio dot here and click OK. 
and now we have a photo mat. And again, the, you can see the 400.1 millimeters down there. Again, you don't have to worry about that because it's simply taking your 51 and a half millimeter specification here, and it's calculating that to the closest printer dot within 600 dots per inch, and you might get 0.1 millimeter difference here and there. It's not going to affect the print whatsoever, so that's not something you have to worry about. It's just a rounding that has to be done because you're in 600 by 600 here. Um, now I notice right away that this is a gray photo mat, so the default is white, so I must have changed that previously and it remembered it. So I'm going to go and edit, select the photo mat first, and then do edit selected photo mat, click on the color, and choose white. And now you can see that it has a white photo mat. So now I've edited the photo mat so that it's white, and we have the same thing that we had before. We can drag this up, and again, the print will move with it, and they'll stay aligned. And as was pointed out, if you want to edit the photo mat and give it a little bit more space on the bottom, again, keeping the top and bottom so that they add to 80, so we still get a 400 by 500 photo mat, we can do that. And now we get smaller space on the top and larger on the bottom, and we can move this anywhere we want. Now we could save this as a layout. Before we save it, though, we want to make sure corner marks are on so that that gets saved with the layout. So that it'll place the corner marks right here and save as a layout. I'll just use 111 here. We use zeros in the second video. And now when we add prints, we're in this new layout that we created. We add prints. And you can see that it places the corner marks where our photo mat is, which is right here. And our photo is where we wanted it, which is a little bit shifted toward the top. So that's the easy way to get the photo mats to go anywhere you like. Um, we can edit this and do whatever we want with the numbers here. Now this, take notice to this. When we were initially setting it up, we were working with templates. But now that there's an image in here, you see that the sides of the photo mat are going to be different. Um, these are based on how the image is located. So this is going to be the left side of the image, and this will be the right side of the image. So the right here would be up here. That's your 30. So we don't have to worry about that when we're using templates because templates are arbitrary. But once you get a print in here, if you wanted to change the size here of all these numbers, keep in mind that the sizes, the, the borders here are relative to the print. So this 50 belongs to this side of the print because this is the left side of the image. And this one here belongs to the right side of the print. So that's why these numbers here are rotated a bit. So that's something to keep in mind. If you wanted to shift this up a little bit more, just keep in mind that this is the right side of the print. So I would have to put like 20 in here and 60 in here. That would give me 20 on the right side of the photo and 60 on the left side of the photo. Click OK. And as you can see, it shifted the print even further up here. So. That's how you use photo mats, and it's kind of the final advanced course in, in what we're doing here. Uh, obviously, in this case, you may want to put the space down here because the, the print is actually printed this way, rotated 90 degrees. 
So we might want to go in here to photo mats, edit, and we might want, let's say, 40 on the left and right. And we might want something like, oh, I don't know, uh, 61.5 underneath it and 41. 0.5 on the top. And doing that, let me drag this back down here to the center. Doing that, you can see we still have 400 by 500 photo mat, but we've specified that underneath the print, we want more, more space. So now we have more space here and less here. So these are just some of the ins and outs of using photo mats and how you can easily arrange them to how you want them. Thanks for watching.